artists. People don't like working with y'all for a reason. Some of y'all, right? But I think it's fair and I think it's extremely necessary for you to understand the perspective that this producer puts out there. Check it out. Get caught up in potential. Don't ever get caught up in a nigga potential. Uh, that was one, probably one of my biggest problems back in the day. I, like, I had that same shit. You know what I'm saying? Shit, where, you where, you like, where, where you believe in a nigga more than he believes in himself. Oh, God, bro. Don't never get caught up in that. He got to he gotta really... The nigga gotta really eat, breathe, and shit this shit. Like, it gotta be hit in him. Like, and not, and like, he don't need to be caught up. I had an artist like, I wanna be on World Star. I wanna be a World Star. Like, bro, fuck World Star. Like, so much other shit we need to be focused on and doing. Like, like, lame shit like that. Like, why I don't, why, why, why I ain't verified yet? Like, nigga, fuck that. We gonna get there. Like, focus on making this, this good ass music and building up a following. Then I had another nigga who was so caught up in looking like it, but the nigga music was one, was this rudimentary. I, but I believed in my life, bro, you got it if you just, Lock in, but he didn't know how to build up a fan base. He didn't know how to, but he, but he wanted to go buy fake jewelry at the mall and wear wear wear, wear fake designer and look like it and chase hoes. But he wasn't focused on mastering his craft. Get caught up in. Hey man, like, cost my music rudimentary is, yes. is a crazy insult, bro. That, that, what did I just say? <laughs> Last episode, I told you, man. <laughs> I told you, regular words said genuinely hit different than those <laughs> common curse word insults. And I'll tell you, it, I, exactly my point. <laughs> but watch, watch episode twenty five to know we talking about there. But boy, the things that he is, he's saying, great points. This is the stuff that we talk about behind the scenes. Yeah, all right. And many artists don't hear unless you're one of the artists that fit the bill that we like to talk about it around that we like enough to talk about the other ones right. around yeah. so you can understand because many artists don't understand that yo man people can't want it more than you hmm. that's the most common way that you might hear pe pe people say all right like i can't want this more than you but like look we just very recently heard people talk about like having a wake artist up or artists not recording music right pretty established artists and not and it's like yo you've you been around and you've been popping you have all this money but you barely recorded any music and your career isn't solidified you've popped but your career isn't solidified yet and then your project came out and it didn't do all that well but you also didn't give us that much content to work with and i'm not talking about content like social media content i'm talking about hey you only recorded you know 10 songs in an entire year mm -hmm. right that type of thing so Look, people want to believe in artists. People in this music shit, like we talk about it all the time, like people can do other things for more money easy, easier. Yeah. Right? If they're in music and they're trying to take it seriously, you know, either they see music as their way out because they got some other things going on in life, keeping them out of the traditional industries, or they in it for the passion, one way or another. Yeah. Either way it go, they really want what they're attached to to work. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So if they start to view you in this light. It's because they want it more than you, right? And that's a troubling place to be. Now, believing in yourself, though. Like, he talked about, hey, one guy wanting all this validation from platforms like Worldstar and all this type of stuff. And look, he didn't yeah. use the term validation, but that's a lot of times what artists are focused on. Yeah, Like, they have to see themselves somewhere else that has validation for them to feel good about themselves versus having that mentality like, no, we're going to get there. Like, we good. We're going to go our path, stick our ground, stand our ground, and continue to get better because our shit going to be so good that people are going to want to come to us. People are going to post us for free. Now, we might pay for stuff here and there for sure, whatever, because we we're playing the game at some level. But, no, we're going to make more people come to us at the end of the day than we're going to go seek people out. Let me take a quick second to say, if you're an artist trying to blow your music up, or if you're a manager, a music professional in general, trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you, and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply, it's completely free. But the thing is, 
we're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. That's That was the most interesting part of me, right? You talk about the lack of investment. Well, half of it to me is, you know, artists not wanting to invest in themselves. They, they would much rather play the character than do the work to be the character. You know what I'm saying? Which is a, a very real thing. Um, I think we see it more so in like rap. Pride and maybe rap and rock, but rap and rock because they have such like dynamic characters that yep. represent those genres that they want to be that character before it. Like mm -hmm. you are the character that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know the thing that I kind of got the most is I don't feel like artists ever think about like how hard it is for people to believe in them. You know what I'm saying? Like first off, believing in somebody is very emotionally draining, right? Especially when they're not doing all the things that that you want them to do or need them to do and like, like I, I speak about this kind of thing like I, i've seen both sides of it like one from a marketing perspective like us in the agency and then from the management situation that i had right and like it's, it's draining when it's like damn you've been working 14 hours to get this op for artists that then fucks it up and misses it you know what i'm saying like it's tiring bro or like the, the the beautiful thing about the marketing agency is that the payment is the buffer right it can be like hey you spend this money so if you don't do the work there ain't no refunds, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like you just yeah. you just ass out. But when you in one of those positions where you're not taking money from the artist, like management, um, you know, whatever other creative services that people may be offering, like that shit is very emotionally draining. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so I think that like artists need to take the step back to like one, like every artist listening to this needs to text your team members and be like, bro, I appreciate you. And I'm about to get to work. You know what I'm saying? They would probably love to hear that. <laughs> Y'all watching a YouTube video instead of getting to work right now. You know what I'm saying? Just just being real, you know what I'm saying? They listen to the pod and not working. But also just like think about like think about like what the other side like looks like you know what i'm saying like for you as an artist that's privileged to have people around you that believe in you more than likely means they're taking work off your hand that you would have to do if they weren't there for you you know what i'm saying like if you didn't have this manager you'd be the one responding to emails at seven o'clock in the morning if you didn't have this producer homie it'd be you scrolling through youtube looking for beats right if you didn't have this engineer homie it'd be you mixing and mastering all your shit um, so like think about like the amount of work that like that they are having to go through to believe you because like you said bro like every person in music that has a valuable skill set in theory could take their skill set somewhere else it may not necessarily be a different industry but it could very much so be a different person mm. you know what i'm saying like mm. you know like it's like like i said going back to the marketing thing i know that if we get 10 clients and one of them is bullshit i'm just gonna focus on the other now <laughs> Hey, like client number one, bro, you ain't meet the bar, but two, three, four, five, and six. Hey, man, they doing everything we told them to do, right? They doing everything right. They making certain moves that you fighting against and won't even attempt to do. Why am I going to waste my time over here when I could just help make their situation big and we all win? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think like a lot of artists get caught up in thinking like, you know, especially if you're like your manager, your team's like flagship artists or like only artists or something. Like you get caught up in like, they need me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I run this shit. They came to see me, Otis. You know what I'm saying? But any smart business person with any other skill set around music or music artists is one long term way more valuable than you are as an artist. You know what I'm saying? Typically, like like yeah. last last episode, there was a clip we played where the guy was like, um, you know, oh the the box, the, the, uh, the the boxer video, right? Where he's talking about how like, you know, the the boxer might have X amount of years in this shit. But the manager might have 50, 60. Same shit with every other position in music except for the music artists. <laughs> you know, so it's like, like I don't know, but I always come out of that, bro. Somebody, cause somebody come in on one of my TikTok videos was like, yo, can you believe in me? And I was like, no. I don't know you enough to want to believe in you. And believing in people is a lot of work. It's a wild question. It is a wild question. I looked at that shit, I was like, believe, can you believe in me? I was gonna be nice and say some like encouraging words. And I was like, nah, he need to get hit with reality real quick. I mean. You smack him in the believe face in with it. <laughs> believe in yourself. Man. Believe in you, bro. I believe in you enough to respond back to you. <laughs> man. I think artists should seriously think about a manager who's only getting 10% means when you make your first 100K, they only get $10,000. Crazy. All right. Now, that's well, the agreement. The, the goal is to make you make way more but still think about those reference points yeah all right and what you're making at the time and what that means for them maybe it's 20 percent. okay they make it twenty thousand dollars but there there's a gap there and for that person to be heavily invested in you they really have to make you work 
for them to work. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, and I don't know, man. I, I was thinking like the belief of the business, people behind the business infrastructure is always going to hit different. I mean, like think about a homie the other day who told us like he on a handshake agreement with his artist. Yeah. Crazy, bro. It's like got to be because he believed in him because he wouldn't do it if he didn't believe in him, right? Yeah. But one of the artists thinks about it that way. You know what I'm saying? And I mean, how many, you know, conversations have we had with not even just managers, just different people in the industry who's like, yo, I used to work with this uh, this artist. Oh, what happened? Oh, they got up and then ran off. And so I don't think the artist understands, but belief from a business perspective, while yes, it is a powerful thing for you as an artist, it motivates you, it maybe gives you insight, right? It helps move you along. For the people behind the artist, belief is a very terrifying, emotionally taxing thing, bro. So like, I understand when certain power players in the industry make you jump through a thousand hoops to finally work with them and talk to them. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, even like us, bro, like we make motherfuckers go through application. Like, I don't know, man, you gotta, you gotta put a little work in before I even come in and, and say like, oh, I can't believe in this enough to do a campaign behind it, right? Mm-hmm. So it's still things that we wanna see because w- most people in music have experienced like some type of burn from an artist. Yep. Like the artist getting burned by industry people is a very powerful narrative story as old as time. But the other way around doesn't get talked about as much. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not, it's not, as, it's not as cool, bro. The fans gonna usually root for the artist. You know what I'm saying? Right. Whether they're in the wrong or in the right, they're like, I don't know, I don't know that motherfucker. Why I care that, that you finesse them out of five M's? Get your money up. You know what I'm saying? Whoever you are. So yeah, but belief, belief in the artist is a, is a scary thing. You know what I'm saying? Then yeah. you get all emotionally invested in shit, and then when they're not doing right, bro, you just you angry, you stressed out, don't know why. Well, you know why, but you just stressed. It's like nah, it's not, <laughs> it's not a good feeling. I saw a clip the other day about the Chicago Bulls and it was all these players commenting on Michael Jordan, right? Mm. And yeah, they acknowledged with him that he wasn't the nicest guy all the time, yada, 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 right? But they were like, this dude practiced hard, like crazy. Like one dude said he came from another team and went to the Bulls practice. He was just like, what the hell's going on? Like, <laughs> like this is practice. Like this don't make no sense. And then Jordan will put up crazy numbers in the in the game, and then go to practice and go crazy, like like try hard, playing all out. And what they were saying was, in practice, you had to come see Jordan, right? Mm-hmm. Like you you really did feel like you were going against Jordan, and you had to deal with Jordan. But in the game, you were happy that you had Jordan on your side, mm-hmm. right? Now I'm not telling artists to be hell, you know. <laughs> I don't know what is that art artistzilla like Bridezilla, be yeah, an artistzilla, artistzilla, some yeah. shit like that. But what I am saying is, all of that they had to deal with with Michael Jordan when they were in a game with Jordan, they were happy to have him on their team. Yeah, they felt good that there was a better better chance of success. So if you can have people on your team feel like oh shoot i'm rocking with this artist the way he believes the way he moves the way he works i know we're going to win at some point then people will move different but if they're doubting they feel like i gotta remind you of stuff i'm not talking about because you working so hard i gotta remind you oh you got a meeting right at this time i gotta remind you that practice is a thing gotta remind you that hey you are an artist and you do need to create music right you're not listening you're not coachable because michael jordan was still coachable right you if, if you don't like possess those things that make people confident to follow you or be a part of your vision, then it's going to be hard to keep people around of value. Yeah, because you you're the spark. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and, spark. and so like we're all looking at you as an artist is like, man, like they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. Like, why should I feel motivated to do a good job? You know, there, there are certain professions where you know, if they have integrity, they would do a good job simply because they were paid for it. Like us, right? Like we, if there's a client that does things that makes us not believe in them, then it's like, well, we're going to at least do a good job at the thing that hires for out of mm-hmm. integrity, right? But you can literally like feel the spark like dying along the way, right? Like you, it, it might start with us. We kind of like, man, I don't know. Then you'll talk to the manager and you see that same look of death in his eyes. <laughs> like, man, I'm trying to get him to do X, Y, Z, Brian. You ain't going to get no extra. Yeah. Right. But you might not even get the bare minimum. I'm just, I'm just saying. <laughs> but yeah, you definitely like, not gonna extra. Yeah. The the there's people who get extra. Yeah. Just yes. because yeah. of how they carry themselves 
and the belief that people have in them is like, dang, all right, these are the terms of our agreement. But man, yo, I just talked to somebody and they're dope and they're cool. I'm gonna tell them about you. I don't. That's not a part of my job. I'm mm -hmm. gonna tell them about you, or I'm gonna do a extra thirty minutes on TikTok scrolling looking for ideas for you because of the way you move or the belief in the project, whatever, whatever. So if you want to get the most out of people, it takes you, it, it requires you to move a certain way. Yeah. Yeah. Period. 100%. You know I mean? Now, with that being said, 